Well, hello. Do you have a favorite Bible verse? Or maybe several verses that uh, are very dear to you? Most people do. Well, in fact, many folks seem to find a few verses that really speak to them and call them their life verses. I have a couple of them myself, and uh, someday maybe I'll have a chance to share those with you. But today, I want to just think about the power there is in meditating on a Bible verse. Now, the other day, I got these cards in the mail, I think from uh, Gospel for Asia, and it reminded me that I used to always have cards up around me, so I put these on my bulletin board. And during this pandemic time, I've gone through and taken a look at these several times and been very encouraged by them. So I just wanted to use them as a reminder for you. And today I just want to take the first one, very familiar verse to you, and take a look at it. Now, some people carry Bible verses with them in their heart all the time because they've memorized a bunch of them. Some people say, I just can't seem to memorize a Bible verse. So these cards are great for those who have problems in memorizing. And I encourage you, you don't have to wait to get some in the mail. You don't have to order them from a Bible bookstore or something. You can print some out or write some out on some cards and just put them around you. Now I put these on my bulletin board so I would see them, but in years past, I've taken cards and put them in different places. I have put some on the mirror, so when I shave, now I still do trim a little bit, but when I shave, I would see them, or brush my teeth, comb my hair, which I try to do occasionally anyway, and then others I put on the dashboard of my vehicle. And they've actually come in handy when I get a little frustrated at a red light, I can take a look at them and help to calm me down. But more than that, I've picked up people and given them a ride and it's been a witness tool even as people say, well, what's that? And what's that about? And I've had a chance to talk to them about it. But today I wanna to talk to you about this first verse, well-known verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. This is out of the NIV and it says, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans, now this is, declares the Lord. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Think about that for a second. Isn't that an encouraging verse? Most people find that it is anyway. And now, I want you to know that it's best to always look at the Bible verses in context and have an idea of where they come from so we don't get the wrong ideas. Some people think that, well, this was something that God gave to Jeremiah for himself. But Jeremiah was a prophet and God gave this verse to him to share with other people, to share with people that had been actually taken out of the land. They were the exiles that were taken out of Jerusalem and taken to Babylon. Think about that for a minute. These were people that had been taken out of their homeland. They'd been taken away from everything they knew, from their culture, from their livelihood, from their homes. Some had lost family members and they were absolutely distraught, I'm sure. I'm, I can't imagine that they wouldn't have been. And taken to a new area that they didn't know or understand, a new culture, new language, and yet God encouraged them through the prophet by telling them, I have plans for you. Well, it encourages me to think about, we have a God that has plans for each one of us. He has a plan for you, a plan for me. He has plans for his children collectively and individually. You know, 
God's plans are such that they're built just for you because you are unique. You are built and formed in God's image and yet you have a distinct personality and distinct gifts and distinct ways of doing things. So God has plans that meet you right where you're at. And when I think about that, God has plans for us and he knows each one of us well enough that he has a plan that fits us. He knows you and loves you so deeply that he have, has plans that not only fit you, but they're good for you. He wants to prosper you. Think about this again. I have plans for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. That's an even better part when you get here, not to harm you, but plans to give you hope and a future. Some people are feeling hopeless right now and feeling that we will never have normal again. And honestly, we may not have exactly what we would have called normal again. These people that God had a new plan for, new hopes for, they didn't go back to exactly what they had left behind. But He had plans for them anyway. Great plans for them. And I find it very encouraging to know that we have a God that has not forsaken us. He hasn't left us behind. And He is as real and with us today as He has ever been. God loves you and He has a plan for you. Don't forget that. Be encouraged. As I look at this, I just think about moving forward through this pandemic and into a new normal, a new normal that has new direction, new plans. How do we find God's plan for us? Well, first and foremost, we seek God. We seek God and then His direction. Draw close to Him and He will draw close to you. And then you can ask and seek for His kingdom and seek for His righteousness and He'll bring everything else together for you. That is encouraging. It is exciting even as we look ahead. Don't always look back to what was normal and say that was the best. I think God has the best ahead of us. And we know for all of us who are covered by the blood of Jesus through his sacrifice, through God's love for us, and his plan for us eventually takes us to heaven. Now we're not in a hurry to get there, but we shouldn't be dreading it. We shouldn't be fearing it either. But he has plans here and now for you and for me. And as we move forward looking at those plans, let him direct you, seek him, and find his plan for you. Let's pray. Oh, great and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you do have plans for us. We seek you and yield ourselves to you that we will follow your direction when we receive it. Father God, I pray for each one that is hearing your word today, that Father God, you would draw them near as they draw near to you. In Jesus name, amen. Well, amen. And the lights just went out in here because I was too still for too long, I guess. But God bless you. And until we meet again, may you be blessed richly. Amen.